Okay, hopefully everybody can see the screen and uh, to echo what Koi said earlier on, good morning or good afternoon or good evening to everybody. Uh, I saw the attendee list for this webinar and also the one we're running this afternoon and it seems we've got people dialing in from all four corners of the world which is absolutely brilliant and I think I can say quite happily on behalf of the team over ACL and myself uh, a major thank you for everybody taking out the time and making the effort to attend this morning and also this afternoon's webinars. Uh, for those of you who don't know me let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Brendan Malouli. I'm a solutions architect based in Atlantic Europe. Uh, my main job is to help out our customer base uh, design, develop and implement industrial uh, networking and communication systems, be them wired or wireless. Uh, subject of my short presentation this morning, which will be about 20 odd minutes and then we'll have a Q&A afterwards, is to talk about the threats and the cyber security issues that we're facing in the world of industrial control IoT systems. Uh, this is more of a generic presentation, as I said, to introduce you to the issues that we see on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with our customer base and potential customers. And after I finish, uh, Kwei will take over and we'll talk a little bit more about the fact that we're going to be running other webinars in the very near future, which will drill down in a little bit more detail on the technical side. So, as I said, this is more of an introductory presentation to explain to you the generic threats and issues we get with industrial networking. And to start off, what I'd like to do, and hopefully this all works fine, is show you a little video. Get up in the morning and turn off your alarm and make coffee. Power plants, power grids. And pump gas. Transportation, telecommunication. And use the ATM. You've touched industrial control systems. It's what powers our lives. Something as simple and innocuous as this becomes a challenge for all of us to maintain accountability control of our critical infrastructure systems. This actually contains the Stuxnet virus. It's impacting industrial control. Is this something that's coming after the homeland? But one morning, the first known hacker-caused power outage has occurred. So thousands of people in the Ukraine left in the dark, literally, after hackers infected the country's electrical substations with malware. On Friday at 9 p.m., a TSMC employee was updating production line machinery software and inserted a USB stick into the operating computer without first giving it a virus scan. It is suspected that a computer virus, resembling the one used in the WannaCry cyber attacks, infected some of the company's fabrication tools. Production lines in three TSMC 12-inch fabs across Taiwan were all shut down. Okay, as I said, that was a short video introducing some of what I would describe as headline cyber attacks that have happened in the last nine or ten years. Uh, these became exceedingly newsworthy simply due to the impact they had on the three targets. Obviously, unfortunately, there's a lot of other bad things that can happen which probably haven't made the news because they've been more localized or just affected small or low-scale plants. But 
the general story or the general issue that we're facing now is industrial systems are becoming a major attack vector for cyber criminals or cyber crime or hackers, however you want to call them, simply because the security embedded into these types of networks is not as strong as it could well be. What I'd like to do now is move on to a next slide and just give you a quick overview over what I'll talk about. I'll talk about the security challenges that we're facing, uh, how we're being hacked, how control systems and communication systems in the industrial environment are at risk, give you a small overview of the classes or types of attack and intrusion. And as I said earlier, I'll hand back to Quay when I finished with the Q&A system and she'll talk a little bit and give you updated about further classes where we'll drill a little bit deeper into these topics. Okay, well, first of all, let me give everybody on the call the bad news. Networks are inherently secure, I'm afraid to say. Uh, no matter what you try to do, if there's somebody with enough intelligence, time, and money, they will always normally try and find a way into your control and industrial communication system. Depends upon the value of the target at the end of the day. This basically means that insecure networks need to be protected and how do we why do we protect them well it's very simple it's a financial bottom line if we have an issue with our communication system this means we lose production production loss means we are losing money and the TSMA TSMC uh, attack was a classic example of how something very simplistic could get into a network and cause heavy financial loss. So, as I said, the bad news is networks are inherently insecure, so we need to be able to protect and understand the threats that are coming in to our control and communication systems. Okay, so our challenges in the world of industrial internet of things, control systems, whatever you want to call them, we've got six basic challenges that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the first one is unfortunately one that's endemic in the world of industry, and that's poor computing resources. When somebody is building or designing, for example, a machine or a production line or a factory control or warehouse control system, obviously budgets are important. So quite often, as opposed to buying high-end equipment, high-end IPCs or HMIs or PLCs, they'll go for a level or two down, simply for cost saving. The issue there, though, is obviously we're running weaker hardware, uh, earlier generation CPUs, not enough memory. So as and when we decide, okay, let's upgrade the infrastructure to prevent cyber attacks, we may end up in the situation that the devices we want to protect simply don't have the horsepower to run the software that we want to put on them to protect them. Second big issue uh, is longevity, the lifespan of equipment. Uh, I come from an IT background. I've been with Advantic for about three and a half years now, which was my first real exposure to the world of automation, uh, industrial networking. Uh, in the world of IT, normally we look at equipment and within three, maybe maximum five years, that equipment is either heavily upgraded or simply thrown out and we bring in the next generation devices. Uh, that doesn't happen in the industrial world. Uh, if I look at, for example, some of my machine builder customers, the minimum lifespan on a machine is seven years. I've actually been on customer sites where machines have been implemented that were manufactured 10, 15, even 20 years ago. So we have a lot of old technology in those machines, which makes it difficult to protect and very difficult to update. Other issue we see again in the world of uh, industrial or control systems is often we end up with a mixed vendor environment. The various devices we're using, IPCs, HMIs, PLCs, Ethernet switches, controllers and servos and all that sort of stuff, maybe from various vendors.
which means again implementing a security standard on there is a challenge because each device may suffer or may only support certain levels of security. Uh, other issue we also see is, and this comes back to what I said earlier on in a previous slide, networks are inherently insecure. Uh, the second line of defense on insecurity is being able to detect when an intrusion has taken place. Uh, again, this is a serious challenge, and again, we need to be able to deploy devices within our machine or our factory or our control system whereby we can monitor what's happening in the actual network itself. Uh, point five, lack of patch management. Uh, this is a critical one. Uh, the WannaCry worm was a perfect example of this. It was a known security vulnerability. Microsoft issued a patch that fixed it, but unfortunately that patch wasn't deployed whole scale in the world of industrial networking and machines. And I understand the reason why behind patch management. Uh, if you've spent a lot of time and effort and money on designing machine, the last thing you want to do once the machine is deployed in the field is to start changing operating systems or patching operating systems because that may introduce an instability into the machine itself. So patch management is a serious issue in the world of control and industrial network. Uh, last but not least, which is more of a human issue when it comes down to uh, deploying these types of devices, quite regularly people will just ask, for example, for a switch. That's it. They won't ask about what security functionality that switch offers. Likewise, with an IPC or a PLC, they'll just spec it and leave it at that and not think about the security implementations. And the reason for that quite often and again, this is from my own personal experience, we find that people think somebody else is going to fix the security issue. The guy four offices down from me, he's the guy in charge of security. Well, bad news, the guy four offices down from you probably thinks you're in charge of security as well. So we end up with uh, what we call in English a Mexican standoff. Somebody else thinks it's somebody else's responsibility and in the end it doesn't get addressed or fixed. So that is an important thing for our customers. We try to emphasize to them is you need from day one to start thinking about how you secure and how you protect your network and your industrial control systems. Okay, so what's some of the things we see out there that people think is keeping them safe but is not keeping them safe? And the first one, which was for me an eye-opener when I saw this from one of the industry reports that uh, PD sent through to me, is something called an air gap. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the term air gap, it basically means a network or a series of devices which are not connected onto the internet, which obviously if you think most vectors on cyber attack come through the internet, you think that is pretty safe. Uh, however, that is not the case now. We're seeing two out of three industrial automation or industrial sites are now wired into the internet. And the reason for that is quite straightforward. Uh, as we've moved forward with our technology and our production systems, uh, I'm sure everybody's heard of the famous term factory 4.0. We're now in the situation where the factories, manufacturing or control systems are actually connected directly to the internet, uh, mainly for operational efficiency, the ability to move production from one site to another. And then, of course, we've got the uh, famous cloud-based IIoT analytics, production management, and monitoring. So the air gap, unfortunately, is disappearing rapidly, and that protection has gone. Uh, unpatchable windows or non-patching windows. I mentioned this on the previous slides. What we're seeing is... As I said, a lot of companies 
don't patch Windows or their application software because they're scared it might break something else. Uh, you can also run into the situation that you may be running, for example, a very old version of the OS which has gone end of support. And WannaCry was a perfect example of that. Microsoft issued patches to fix the WannaCry bug or the WannaCry hole. And unfortunately, XP didn't get fixed because it had gone end of support. So we need to be careful not only about patch management, but about end of support software as well, be it the operating system or the application. Authentication is a key function on keeping your network safe from intrusion. Uh, practically every managed device you have out there, switches, routers, IPCs, PLCs, etc., normally come along with a default user ID and password. It's actually a pretty good idea to change that default password as soon as you get the equipment equipment because you can easily go onto Google and just Google the device and you'll find somebody with a database of default user ID and passwords so it's easy for them to hack in. Even if you have changed default user ID and or password, the next thing to keep in mind is encryption. Uh, most devices will support HTTPS or secure socket capability which encrypts the traffic from the user workstation to the end device. If you don't switch that on, the bad news is all your data is going over the wire unencrypted, which means anybody with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of capability can actually start sniffing or reading that traffic off the network and get your password and authentication information. At the end of the day, well, what happens? I mean, if you end up in the situation where you do have some form of cyber intrusion, cyber attack, it can take up to 31 days to recover from these situations. That means removing the threat vector, cleaning the infected machines, securing the network, and putting the production or control systems back online. So, as I said earlier, and one of the main emphases on this presentation is we have to protect the networks simply to keep production flowing, simply to make sure we don't start losing money. Well, uh, types of attack, well, I'm not going to de delve too deeply into these. We've got six generic classifications of attack that we see in industrial or automation style networking. Uh, the ones that I've highlighted out in yellow are the ones that are more difficult to deal with. And also quite often these types of attack come from within the network. Uh, the Ukrainian power grid example was a classic. That was a denial of service attack which was run from PCs within the control system network of the power grid. So we have various types of attack and the ones that we are most worried with, and from a survey I saw a while ago, something like 90% of cyber attacks actually happen within the network itself. So it's not an external issue. Uh, when it comes down to intrusion onto your network, we have three, again, generic classifications. We have users who are basically not authorized, but will via one way or another, for example, stealing a legitimate user's credentials, be able to start moving around the network. A lot of the worms that we've seen in the past take this approach. Uh, a misfeasor, this is more like a guy who's locally on your network, who is authorized for certain levels of security, but unfortunately due to poor security processes or security implementation, he is not, he is allowed or he can get into areas of the network and control systems where he's not allowed to. And then last but not least is the worst guy, which is what we call the clandestine user. He's the smart guy who's managed to figure out a way of controlling or seizing control of supervisory systems, either by hacking or seeing the root controller password 
does his stuff, does his changes, does his damage, and because he has that high access level onto the network, he can actually delete from the security logs what he was actually up to. And again, these are all mostly internal style attacks. And as I said, this is our biggest challenge. Okay, zooming in a little bit onto those types of intrusion, uh, root compromise attacks are unfortunately very common, especially in the world of the Linux OS. Uh, this, by using root compromise, we can gain control of systems on the network. Uh, guessing, sniffing, or not changing your passwords, we talked about that on an earlier slide, together with the ability that if you've given, been given too much permission, or the permission controls on the network are not set right, you can go around and start seeing stuff on your industrial control system which you shouldn't be able to see. Packet sniffers, again, I covered that earlier on. It's critical that we use encryption when we're using login and user IDs. Uh, one of the bigger ones we're seeing at the moment is Wi-Fi attacks. Uh, Wi-Fi is becoming more and more popular in control and automation systems simply because it's easy to deploy. Uh, obviously, you always need to make sure that your Wi-Fi SSID is encrypted uh, with a password. And as I said earlier, make sure you always change the default password. Uh, we have other issues as well with Wi-Fi. Somebody might actually bring their own Wi-Fi access point to work because IT wouldn't give them a couple more Ethernet connections. So they'll bring in their own home Wi-Fi and connect to that. And that obviously is a security issue. We call that a rogue access point. And then last but not least, if you go onto the internet and Google pineapple Wi-Fi, you'll actually find a device that's designed to pretend or masquerade as an SSID and act as a man in the middle attack. So Wi-Fi, we always have to be careful and suspicious on deploying Wi-Fi and do it the correct way. Last but not least, probably the most simplistic and easiest to prevent is somebody logging, being logged onto the computer and leaving at the end of the evening or at lunchtime and leaving the workstation logged in. Uh, that means anybody could just walk up to that workstation and if that person has supervisory rights on the network, well, you know, it's going to be a bad, bad situation. Okay, so that's our types of intrusion, our types of attack. Uh, highlighted, as I said, we're mainly orientated towards our control industrial networks. Uh, preventing cyber attacks is, I hate to use this English word, it's called a, but we often call it a holistic approach. Every device on the network has to be involved in that. So we're talking about your routers, your PCs, your controllers, etc., etc., and also the data communications infrastructure which are your switches. Now, I've got a whole bunch of wonderful things appearing on the screen there. Uh, just to give you a brief highlight of how this technology is deployed or used versus the types of attack, I've got a small slide up there. But, you know, as I said right at the beginning of the uh, webinar, we'll be running future webinars where we actually drill down in a lot more detail as to type of attack, how, for example, our network infrastructure can be developed, designed, and, and uh, programmed to prevent these types of attacks. And as I said, we have the security pack, which is available on all our managed switch infrastructure products. Uh, it's downloadable from the website. And within the security pack, we have a whole host of functions, which I mentioned two slides ago, whereby we can either prevent or mitigate cyber attacks on our industrial or control system networks.